Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Jake and thank you for joining me on Exploit Academy. Now today we're going to look at exploiting Samba version 3.0.20. Now this exploit works on any version of Samba between versions 3.0.20 through 3.0.25 RSC3. So first we're going to look at uh, exploiting this using a Python script I found on GitHub. So that would be the manual exploitation method as well as using Metasploit. So first I have two machines running. I have the Kali Linux machine and I will be using Metasploitable as our vulnerable machine in this example. Before I get started, stick around to the end of the video because I want to talk about how this exploit works. So that way you guys have a better idea of how this thing is kind of unraveling and you're not just blindly uh, launching scripts and you get to understand the exploit a little bit better. I believe that helps because if something goes wrong, like if you're trying to run a script and something isn't working, you guys would have better knowledge of how to get around that. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, so we're back inside of Kali Linux. I have uh, Metasploitable running in the background here, as you can see here. I already ran the ifconfig command on it just to pull the IP address to make this uh, attack a lot faster so we don't have to go through the process of doing like an in map scan, for example. So the IP address of the Metasploitable box is 10.0.0.86, and that is running in the background. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you uh, the GitHub page for the script that we are going to use in the manual exploitation example. And that is found here. And I'm going to link that URL in the description for the video so you guys can just click on that. Uh, this is for CVE 2007-2447, which is the Samba user map script exploit. And you can see it gives us our usage and our installation instructions. So of course, the first thing we're going to uh, do is install the script. So I'm going to open up a terminal. Uh, I'm going to shrink that down a little bit. Uh, let's zoom in so you guys can see it a little bit better. I think that'll work. All right. So I am going to copy the first instruction here, which is I think just downloading Python. We already have Python, but we're going to go ahead and run it anyways. Let's make sure everything's uh, going to run correctly. Press enter. Type Kali for the password if using default. Uh, has no installation candidate. Okay, so we get our first error here. It says uh, Pyth package Python has no installation candidate. So I'm just going to select one of these here. Uh, let's do Python 2. Try that command again, but let's try Python 2 this time. There we go. Do you want to continue? Yes. Let that download. And there we go. Okay. Clear screen. Moving on to the next command, which is pip install dash dash user pi smb. Let's go ahead and paste that and run that command as well. Do you want to install it? Y for yes. Do you want to continue? Y for yes. Let that install and we are done with that. So that's great. And then we are going to download the script using this command right here. Git clone. For those of you who don't know too, if you're new to this, you can also click on this button here and uh, download zip. But we're just going to go ahead and follow uh, along with the instructions here. So I'm going to navigate to uh, the desktop real quick to download this all right so i'm in my desktop so i'm gonna right right click paste and let that download all right so now that we have the script downloaded let's go ahead and try it out so i'm gonna open up a new terminal i'm gonna navigate back to our newly uh, downloaded folder so from cd into the desktop clear this out ls cd to the folder we just downloaded and there we go. So we have our uh, readme that the author put in there as well as the script itself. So we're going to go ahead and skip the readme. It's basically just the same stuff that's on the GitHub, which is like the installation instructions and the usage. So 
to use this script, you're going to follow what's on the GitHub page here. So I'm going to type in Python user map script dot pi and then our metasploitable address, which is 10.0.0.86 and the uh, port. So that'd be 445. And then now this is our Cali information. So my IP address is, I believe, 87. Check. 57. So my IP address, you zoom in here. My Cali IP address is 10.0.0.57. So we're going to go ahead and use that 10.0.0.57. And the port we want to connect back to, which is any number you want. Uh, I'm going to do 5,000. Now, before you hit enter, we're actually going to open another terminal and create a listener using netcat. So I'm going to open up another terminal. And let me shrink this for you guys. I'm going to zoom in real quick. So we're going to run netcat tac lvp and then the same port that you're going to run on the script. So minus 5,000. I'm going to type in 5,000. And now that is listening. The reason you need this is because this exploit is going to run a uh, reverse connection back. So you need to have a listener ready to catch that connection on whatever port you specify. So now that we have our netcat listener running, I'm going to press enter. And there you go. You can see that the Samba user map script was connecting and the payload was sent. Check netcat. So back on our netcat listener here, you can see we have a connection from the Metasploit machine on uh, port 51,555. So if I press LS, you can see we get the root system, or I'm sorry, the file system of Metasploitable. Um, if I type in who am I, I'm root, and we are root. All right, so moving on, now we're gonna do the same exact exploit, but using Metasploit. So I'm gonna open up a terminal, and I'm going to go ahead and launch Metasploit. All right, so I'm going to search for Samba 3.0.20. And you can see here it pulls up the exploit for Samba user map script. So I'm just going to select U0 to select that script. And I'm going to type in show options to show the required options. So we can see here. All we have to do is set the remote host, which is the address to our Metasploitable machine. And it already did, uh, it already typed in our local host and our L port for us. So I'm gonna set our hosts to 10.0.0.0.86, which is the IP address, again, to Metasploitable. Press enter, show options. All right, so we have everything set double checking and type in run. So it's starting a TCP handler on our local machine to take in the incoming connection. And then you can see right there, command shell session one opened by type in LS. We have the file system for Metasploitable as well as who am I, we are root and there you go. So that's how you do that exploit using Metasploit as well. All right, so now that we looked at the manual exploitation method, for this vulnerability as well as the Metasploit method. I'm gonna to talk to you guys about how this exploit actually works so you have a broader understanding of it. So first, let's talk about Samba. What is Samba? Well, Samba is a software that was developed to allow Windows machines and Linux machines to communicate. So if Windows wanted to print, it would use SMB to communicate with the printer as well as other Windows machines to share files, to access file shares and that kind of thing. Now, the problem originally arose when you had a Linux machine and a Windows machine on the same network. Well, they can't communicate each other. You know, a Linux machine can share files with Windows and Windows can file share with uh, Linux. So that's where Samba came in to handle that whole process to where Linux can now communicate with Windows and Windows can now communicate with Linux. So that is what Samba does. Now, the problem comes in with the Samba login. So when you go to log into Samba, 
you have to specify, of course, a username and a password. Or during the username portion of the login, you can use meta characters to escape the login and run command injection. So essentially, say you're going to go to login to Samba, you can use special characters to escape that login and run, for example, Netcat. Well, Netcat would then run on the remote machine and then connect back to the host machine, like Kali Linux, for example. So that is exactly what the script does. So I'm going to open up Kali Linux again, and I'm going to show you the script and show you how uh, it exactly works. All right, guys, so now that we're back inside of Kali Linux, let's check out that script that we used earlier during our manual exploitation. So I'm going to right click the user mask script. I'm going to open with mouse pad so we can check this out. So the first thing is you can see the beginning of the script is actually right here. So when you go to run the script, it asks, it asks for uh, four arguments. So that'd be the R host, the R port, the L host, and the L port. What it does is it takes our arguments right here and passes them into a function called exploit. Now at this function exploit, which is right here, you can see define exploit. And then it passes the R host value, that R port value, the L host value, and the L port value at runtime into this exploit. So for example, when we're doing like Python, you know, user map script.py, we type in values that like 10.0.0.1 and then, you know, 4445, whatever. This, these arguments right here are these right here. So just in case to give you a better idea of what's going on. So that's what that is. And then it creates a string called payload. Now the string payload is of course the payload. So it runs this command here as followed by a netcat command right here. And then the rest of the payload right here. So that netcat part is what's pretty important because that's what's connecting back to Kali Linux or whatever your uh, machine is at the time. And then the script creates a string called username. Now inside this username string is that uh, the meta characters that escape that username login that we were talking about earlier. So when you're going to connect to SMB on Samba, you can escape the username portion and run a command. Well, that's what that's, this is uh, what it's doing. So you can see right here, these are the meta characters to escape the username followed by no hang up, which is a Linux command to keep a process open. And then it appends the payload string. So this right here, and then closes it with this meta character here. So if we look at that, all this, all this right here, followed by these right here are stored inside a username. So this username string essentially is this plus this plus this all right here. And then it defines an SMB connection in con right here. And then it passes this username variable right here as a username. So when it goes to connect to SMB using the username, it sends this as the user, the username. And what that does is it runs this netcat command right here to connect back to our Kali Linux machine. So that is how this script actually works. It's nothing complicated and there's actually a few different methods of doing this. It doesn't have to be exactly uh, this command right here. There's actually a simpler way to do it, but um, this is the most reliable script I've found and it works very well. All right, guys, so that wraps everything up. I hope that was a big help to you guys getting into exploitation and Samba as well. If this video did help you out, please comment below. If you have any kind of questions or just want to show you support, like my videos, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.